During an expedition, a young Viking and his friends discover the existence of dragons and decide to work as a team to keep them safe, away from the human world. Today we're going to recap the story of the first two seasons of the 2021 series, Dragons, The Nine Realms. Tom is a teenager with a passion for dragon stories, but he grew up hearing his mother say that these are mythical creatures that only exist in tales and legends. One day, Olivia, who is a geologist, takes her son on a helicopter tour to see the Cullerson Fisher, which is home to large rivers of lava. After crossing it, the two arrive at the Akari's project headquarters and are greeted by Mrs. Wong, who asks her daughter to keep Tom company. When the other students arrive at the headquarters, they are met by Philip, the head of security, who welcomes them to the International Center for Excavation, Research and Investigation. The quartet is then guided to the visitor center, but Tom manages to lose the group so that he can visit the restricted areas of the facility. While observing the fissure, he notices something like lightning approaching and, soon after, an earthquake strikes. At that moment, one of the employees ends up falling and hanging from the cliff, so Tom has to run to help her. After setting off the alarm, he grabs a rope and tries to pull Linda up. However, the boy doesn't have enough strength and ends up being dragged with her. Just as they were about to fall off the cliff, Philip appears and manages to rescue them. After the scare, Tom and his mother go to their room and the boy realizes that Olivia is very angry. In his defense, he recalls that he is descended from Vikings, so adventure is in his blood. The young man is convinced to take another look at the fissure to find out what he saw inside, but his mother receives a call from Mrs. Wong and is summoned to start her expedition. While his mother is at work, Tom uses a drone to investigate the site and finds something hidden among the rocks. As he approaches, the equipment is struck by lightning and the boy has to go down to get it. Just then, he notices a creature trapped in the middle of some rocks and becomes terrified. Tom quickly starts climbing, but changes his mind when he realizes that the animal needs help. Looking around, he sees a tail and removes the rock on top of it. Now that it is no longer in pain, the creature fires a bolt of lightning and destroys all the rocks around it. During the explosion, the boy ends up falling, but manages to cling to the rock and, when he gets up, he realizes that the monster he has freed is actually a dragon who is afraid of the light. With the help of his flashlight, Tom manages to drive the animal away and falls while trying to climb back up to the installation. Luckily, the creature returns and manages to save him and, after holding the boy, takes him into a cave. Immediately, Tom begins to look for a way out of the place, but begins a chase when the dragon steals his backpack. After eating all the boy's snacks, the little monster takes him back to the facility and leaves. The next morning, Tom gets ready for his first day at school and tells Jun that he saw a dragon while exploring the fissure. After class, the boy returns to the cave and, this time, takes some snacks for his new friend, but soon discovers that the animal doesn't like the same food as humans. So he tries out different menus until he finally finds out which fish is that dragon's favorite dish. After sharing a whole packet of fish nuggets, the two become great friends and the animal takes Tom for a walk in the gorge. However, during their flight, an earthquake strikes and they are almost hit by a large rock, but luckily they manage to take shelter inside a cave. At that moment, Tom finds a crack in the wall and, when he opens it, he finds the sanctuary where hundreds of dragons live. However, when he receives a message from his mother, the boy needs to get home quickly and is given a lift there. Every time it approaches the installation, the animal releases a pulse of energy to turn off the lights. In this way, it can fly over the human world without being seen. After tricking his mother, Tom decides to go after the dragon once again and asks Alex to help him deactivate the sensors. By doing so, he manages to bypass the facility's security system and get out unnoticed. What the boy didn't realize was that he was being followed by Jun, who can't wait to meet a dragon in person. When she sees the creature for the first time, the girl is thrilled and learns that Tom has decided to name it Thunder. Immediately, Jun takes out her cell phone to photograph the animal, but her friend says that no member of Akari's can know of Thunder's existence, as they will try to capture him for research. Tom then decides to take her to meet the other dragons and the young girl is thrilled to have the privilege of flying on the back of this beautiful animal. When she comes across a world full of dragons, Jun is surprised to discover that they are kind creatures, as she believed them to be ferocious beasts. However, she soon realizes that not all the animals that live there are docile, as she ends up being attacked by crystal-eating dragons. At that moment, Thunder tries to help the youngsters escape, but they are all hit by shots and have to hide. During her escape, the girl ends up in an underground lake where she meets a two-headed dragon and decides to train it. While Jun makes friends with the dragons and tries to think of a way out of that underground prison before they are all crushed by an earthquake, Tom and Thunder are on a mission to get rid of the gem breakers who keep chasing them. With Wu and Wei's help, they open a crater in the ceiling and finds her friends again. Then they all head out of the cave. 
On the way, the two young Popol hear the cry for help from a gem breaker and decide to go down to help him. The animal is apparently injured and can't fly, so the pair return to the facility in search of a first aid kit. When they arrive at the hospital, they meet Baker and discover that the boy's grandfather is a veterinarian. So they decide to take him to the fisher to help the dragon. With the help of the rest of the group, the young man manages to get close and applies a tranquilizer to the creature. He then tends to its wounds and gradually wins the animal's trust. After removing a crystal that was stuck in her wing, the gem breaker stops feeling pain and makes friends with the boy who helped her. Suddenly, the three monsters that attacked Tom and Jun appear and attack their wounded companion. Furious, Baker tries to scare them off and ends up becoming the dragon's new target. At this point, his friends try to help him escape, but the boy ends up getting hit and is saved by the gem breaker. Seeing the rest of the group being defeated, the pair team up to bring down a crystal and crush the enemy dragons. Now that he has found a partner, Baker decides to call her Plowhorn and the two begin a beautiful friendship. Together, they decide to take a walk in the fissure and are almost caught by an Akari's helicopter. In an attempt to prevent their dragons from being seen and captured, the youngsters train an escape tactic and teach the animals to use their powers as a distraction to escape. At this point, the group notices someone approaching and realizes that Alex is about to discover the existence of the cave. Now that she has seen the dragons, the trio decide to invite her to join their club, but she runs away and they have to go after her. When she gets home, Alex is terrified and tries to convince herself that it was all just a dream. Suddenly, however, she notices someone in her house and discovers that she has been followed by a dragon with the power of camouflage. The girl quickly runs to get help and, when she opens the door of her house, she sees her classmates. When he discovers the existence of the invisible dragon, Tom tries to capture it, but all he manages to do is scare it away. So he decides to sit and wait for the animal to approach Alex. Just then, the girl reaches out her hand and feathers connect with her. The group then needs to take their dragons back to the cave and Wu and Wei use their fog breath to throw off the guards. Relieved to be able to maintain their disguise, the teenagers watch their beautiful dragons mingle and feel happy to have formed a new family. That night, in his sleep, Tom is woken up by an earthquake which, this time, is stronger than any he has ever experienced. Since arriving at the station, Olivia has been informed about the existence of these tremors and realizes that they are increasing over time. If this phenomenon continues, the foundation of the Akaris will be doomed, as it risks crumbling and falling into the fissure. To prevent this from happening, the geologist plans to set off an explosion inside the fissure to destroy whatever is causing these tremors. Upon hearing this news, Baker soon realizes that the dragon's cave will be affected and everyone is worried. Just then, Wilma Sledkin enters the room and says that Olivia's plan will only make the facility collapse faster. However, as Tom's mother is a renowned scientist, they all decide to follow her plan and, at dawn, send a probe to blow up the place. So the youngsters go to the cave to warn the dragons and, after making sure that everyone is okay, Tom decides to send them to the hidden world. That way, if the cave collapses, they won't be affected and after the explosions happen the dragons can return. However, when the teenagers leave the cave, they come across a gigantic creature and discover that it is the one causing the tremors. Immediately, the quartet realizes that their parents are in danger, because if they go down into the fissure they will be devoured by that dragon. So Tom and Jun decide to go down the tube and meet their dragons to ask for help. When they reach the entrance to the hidden world, they discover that the passage has been blocked by rocks and Tom uses a hammer to try to destroy them. Just then, Thunder realizes that his friend is nearby and unleashes his lightning to open the passage. With the help of his dragon, Tom flies towards the probe determined to eliminate the monster that is attacking Olivia and Philip. The pair are about to be shot when their friends show up and join forces to attack the enemy. Feathers then uses her blast of sound to disorientate the monster and it ends up falling into the fissure, but manages to drag Tom and Thunder down. Jun immediately goes after them, but can't catch up with her friend. Luckily, the boy manages to free himself and, together with his dragon, flies back to the surface. After the explosion, Olivia and Philip return to the base and celebrate the success of the mission. Now that the threat has been neutralized, the dragons return to the cave and leave their mark on the rock. Seeing the mark left by thunder, Tom realizes that it is identical to the symbol drawn on his helmet and wonders what bond his ancestors had with those dragons. One day, while having fun in the cave, the group finds a unicorn-like dragon baby. Despite its small size, the creature releases explosive bubbles from its horn and Jun is delighted with its cuteness. The girl plans to adopt the little one, but her friends say this is a bad idea, as the baby could end up causing problems. So she decides to sneak him home, but when she gets there the bubble horn makes a real mess and runs away. With the help of the rest of the team, Jun starts looking for him and finds him inside a supermarket. 
Tom then uses a broom to throw the little guy into a garbage can and Baker manages to trap him. When they return to the forest, they discover that there are baby unicorns scattered everywhere, setting off explosive bombs which, at some point, will attract the attention of the guards. Seeing that one of her friends has been captured, the whole gang starts chasing the teenagers and Jun is trapped. Luckily, dragons appear and scare the little ones away. During the escape, Baker ends up knocking Nibbles off the cliff, but his friends manage to rescue him. They then unite to form a huge explosive bubble capable of destroying the entire station. To prevent this disaster from happening, Jun orders Wu to freeze the bubble and the group manages to throw it into the fissure, preventing the Akari's employees from being hit by the explosion. That day, Olivia is tasked with mapping some caves in Sector 2 with Wilma and Tom is afraid that his mother will find the entrance to the hidden world. So he decides to accompany them and, while crossing a rocky bridge, they both end up falling off. Luckily, the pair are trapped by a rope and Thunder quickly appears to help. However, Tom asks him to hide, as he doesn't want to risk his mother seeing the dragon. With teamwork, mother and son manage to save themselves from the fall and continue their mission of exploration. Together, they find a beautiful crystal that has never been seen before and Olivia decides to take it to the laboratory for research. Just then, Wilma appears and an earthquake strikes. While the geologists run towards the tremor to investigate, Jun and the others try to use a dragon's lava to seal off the entrance to the cave and prevent Olivia from finding the hidden kingdom. However, the magma it releases ends up seeping into the rest of the cave and, when they realize that the place is going to be flooded, the trio decide to flee. Noticing that his mother is in danger, Tom runs to find Thunder and the dragon clears the way for Olivia and Wilma to pass. After crossing the rocky bridge, the women return to the station and Tom heads for the hideout. When he meets his friends again, the boy thanks them for their help, because if they hadn't intervened, Wilma and Olivia would have found the hidden world. Every afternoon after school, the four youngsters meet in the dragon cave. One day, however, they are surrounded by zombie dragons and Baker takes a bite out of his arm. While the group is trying to escape, Feathers ends up being captured and only after taking their prey do the dragons leave. Seeing her friend in danger, Alex becomes desperate and the rest of the team tries to reassure her. At this point, Baker realizes that the bite on his arm has started to become infected, but decides not to talk about it with his friends. Using the tracker she's placed on Feather's saddle, Alex manages to locate her, but soon discovers that her saddle has been removed and she has to find another way to find her. Suddenly, Plowhorn smells the dragon and follows its trail until she arrives at a kind of temple, where the zombies gather around Feathers. The group immediately flies to the prison to save their friend, but they all have to flee when the dragons start chasing them. During the escape, Jun realizes that Baker has been bitten and the boy asks Tom to tie him to the gembreaker's horn so that he can't attack them if he turns into a zombie. Alex then hatches a plan to save her dragon and asks her friends to distract the zombies while she runs to the prison. When she gets there, the girl discovers that there are two babies trapped with feathers and uses a crystal to destroy the bars. Unexpectedly, a zombie dragon appears and starts chasing them, but the pair manage to outwit the creature. Just then, Alex realizes that her friends are surrounded and goes to meet them. Then Feathers attacks them with her supersonic scream and the group realizes that those dragons aren't zombies, they're actually undergoing a stin change process. Upon discovering this, Baker is relieved to know that he won't turn into a zombie and, even though she sees all the dragons of his species leave, Feathers chooses to remain by Alex's side. Ever since he discovered that Thunder's mark is identical to the symbol on his helmet, Tom has been obsessed with investigating his ancestors' connection to dragons. One afternoon, while flying over a lake inside one of the caves, he meets a water dragon and little his helmet falls off. Immediately, the boy jumps into the lake determined to retrieve it and is almost swallowed by the creature. However, Thunder manages to save him and takes his friend back to dry land. When he meets up with the other youngsters, Tom discovers that Akaris has issued a warning signal because there has been a fire in the forest near the facility. Determined to save possible victims of the fire, Olivia and Philip head into the forest. Then Tom goes after them with his team to provide air support and helps the pair find three lumberjacks who are surrounded by fire. Once everyone is safe, the team begins to think of a way to put out the fire and Tom has the idea of enlisting the help of the water dragons to do the job. With Alex's support, the boy uses fireflies as bait to lure the dragons into the forest, as these insects are their favorite food. Once there, the creatures release a large amount of water and put out the fire that was consuming the forest, saving the entire Akari's base. A few days later, during another of their expeditions, the quartet encounters a new kind of dragon. This time, it looks a lot like a giant spider. When she sees the animal, Jun is terrified, as she is terrified of spiders, so she decides to just watch while her friends try to get it back to its cave, as the animal seems to be lost. However, 
When Baker and Tom try to capture it, the little monster escapes and ends up getting stuck in Jun's head. As the team is unable to remove it, Alex suggests taking the dragon back to its cave, in the hope that it will feel safer to go out on its own. When she sees that place full of webs, Jun gets so scared that she ends up being captured and Alex also gets stuck trying to help her. Suddenly, the dragon baby's brothers appear, but Tom and Baker can't get in to help them because the entrance to the cave is sealed. To make matters worse, the group is attacked by dozens of spiders and the dragons have to learn how to combine their powers to defeat them. Just then, the youngsters manage to enter the cave and save their friends. However, when the group meets up again, dozens of other enemies appear and start chasing them. Then, once again, the dragons combine their powers and manage to defeat them. That Saturday morning, the youngsters get together to walk with the dragons and Tom discovers that Thunder isn't in the cave. So he enlists Plowhorn's help to follow the trail of his dragon and the group ends up in a kind of parallel world. While flying through that mysterious cave, the teenagers come across a bunch of dragons trying to get away from something, yet they continue their journey. Suddenly, Tom sees some lighting up the sky and begins to suspect that this is a call for help from Thunder. But before the youngsters could continue their rescue, the unicorn dragons appeared and started attacking them with their explosive bubbles. At that moment, Feathers lures the little ones into the lake and Wu freezes them with his icy breath. Now that the way is clear, the group decides to continue their journey, until a hurricane approaches and they discover that it is an extremely powerful dragon that is causing the storm. The three dragons then team up to attack him, but end up trapped in the middle of a tornado of fire along with their trainers. Since he has the toughest dragon, Baker decides to fly towards the eye of the hurricane so that the plowhorn can strike the enemy. Then, when the cyclone is undone, the other members of the team unite their powers to attack the dragon and manage to chase it away. Tom then finds Thunder and feels relieved, but soon realizes that his dragon was in a battle with another creature that is still nearby. In an attempt to find his adversary, Thunder enters a cave and is followed by his friends. At this point, the group discovers that they are trapped in a labyrinth and, no matter how far they run, they always arrive at the same place. After a few minutes walking in circles, they finally find the creature that lives in that cave, but luckily it's asleep. Alex immediately plots an escape route to get out of the place, but Thunder is determined to face the monster in a duel. While Tom tries to convince him to leave, the dragon wakes up and uses the crystals in the cave to radiate his power. Knowing that there is no escape, the group decides to confront him and unite to attack the monster. However, when Tom is electrocuted, they have to retreat and end up getting separated in the labyrinth. While trying to find his friends again, the boy discovers that the dragon was the one who destroyed Thunder's family and now he's out for revenge. Tom promises to help him, but Thunder doesn't want to risk the boy's life, so he tries to keep him away from the battle. However, when he meets Jun and the others again, Tom manages to catch up with them and they all attack the electric dragon in an attempt to buy time to escape. However, seeing that their friends have been defeated, Tom and Thunder decide to eliminate the thing once and for all and the boy uses a crystal to absorb the electricity while his dragon shoots lightning at the enemy. After losing the battle, the electric dragon flees and Tom finds a spearhead that was probably made by human hands. So his next mission is to find this person in the hope of getting answers that explain his ancestors' connection to those dragons. So what did you think of this series? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the video, like and subscribe for more series recaps. See you next time.